video on how to link to 10 gig switches together. Um, looking at the fiber optic cable, this is a standard fiber optic cable. It has a little plastic connector at the end, um, which we'll remove just before we plug the cable into the switches. Um, it's 850 nanometer standard orange uh, $60 cable, um, 50 feet of it. This is the boot up sequence. There are two D Link uh, DGS 1510 52 switches. Um, these are the typical uh, gigabit switches. They have uh, basically two SFP 10 gig E ports, and um, the rest of them are uh, gigabit ports. The two at the end, uh, next to the uh, two 10 gig E SFP ports, are basically uh, gigabit SFP ports. So they start with stack ID 18 because they're both booting up at the same time. And um, uh, pretty much uh, the first one and the second one, they've switched off their lights. So booting sequence is getting here its completion. Stack ID 18 is the default stack ID on boot up. So you don't need to worry about that until they boot up. They'll change the stack IDs um, once they actually do. And the stack ID with an H is master and H small is slave so h capital is master basically and here's the final boot sequence um you notice the stack id is still 18 now there's switch over um, still um, testing all the leds testing the ports basic part of the boot sequence um, and then shortly they should change and there you go, the top one is H, so it's master. Um, the bottom one is also capital H, so they're, they're both master and the stack ID is one because they're not connected to each other, so um, they're basically stack ID one and master. So now if we configure them, um, we can have a look at the configuration screen, just log in. And here you go, so basically um, it shows only one switch since they're not connected together and it's um, basic one gig port connected right now, which is how I'm able to access the admin screen. Um, here you go, physical stacking, it's enabled, enabled. Um, current unit ID is one, you can see it's only one switch. Um, priority is left blank because I want this switch to be master, so I mean stack master, so I'll leave it blank if you want this one to be 1 by default. If you set a higher number, it'll become the slave basically because the slave is always has a higher a higher priority ID than the master. Um, and if you set both of them to be blank, they'll basically work based on MAC address, which isn't ideal um, because you don't want like lower MAC addresses automatically becoming master, then you don't know which one is master, which one is a slave, and that could cause a lot of confusion. So basically set the slave to higher um, higher priority basically. So the higher priority number becomes the slave. Um, so, and basic shows switch status. Um, so these are the transceivers and these are standard $40 D-Link 10 gig uh, SFP um, 850 nanometer transceivers. Um, you can see basic SFP connection on one end and then a little latching lever on the other end. And these are cheap Chinese clones. Um, and you can uh, basically, want to, when you want to slide them in, you basically unlatch the thing. So we just flip open the latch and here you go, flipped open the latch. Um, and then when you put in the fiber optic cable, this latch will lock securely. So flip open the latch, slide it in, it locks, it'll click in place, even with the little end latch disconnected. So you do the same thing for the other one. And slide it in nicely until it clicks. There you go, don't latch it. You want it unlatched until you get the fiber optic cable in. And now we just take the fiber optic cable in, slide it in. Um, and that little uh, groove on the fiber optic cable will engage the latch and it will click securely in place. So it slides in only one way, nice connectors, clicks into place. 
Um, there you go, second one, slide it in, click into place. You can see green link lights on both of them. And so far, there's it's not yet a stack because they still have to negotiate with each other, but they've got a 10 gig link uh, between each of them. So we have 10 gigs, they're starting to negotiate, they're detecting each other. Uh, data traffic passing between them. And uh, they're basically checking each other's and that's it. So that one has become number two and it's become small h which means it's a slave and it's basically resetting itself. And the master stays unchanged because it's the stack master. And here you go. Um, they pretty much organize themselves into master and slave. Uh, so let's wait for this thing to complete. And it's completing, completing. And you can see those little plugs that I removed from the bottom ones, they're just little plastic squares. You can just remove them, plug them back. Basically just to avoid dust getting into the switches. Switch ports, SFP ports. Um, here you go. So now we have both switches booted up successfully. We go back to our screen. And the first thing we check is, um, let's see, go into the basic screen. And then you can see that I've got one gig port lit and you can select now number two. And then you can see the one gig port is not lit. So we have two different switches all controlled from the same screen. We go into um, where's that stack, physical stacking, yeah, that's it. Um, and then you can see both switches have showed up, priority 32. Um, so the higher priority becomes the slave, and the lower priority becomes the master. And like I said, if you don't set it, it just goes by MAC address, which isn't ideal. And here you go. Both of them are linked together successfully, and you can control both of them from the same screen. And that's about it, folks.